loving. The definition of love, according to the Arcturian Council, is truth. Love is truth, and truth doesn't always feel good. You know how our, our parents, well, I'm almost 50, and my parents called that tough love. There's a truth to that. Um, so we can't discern that on what feels loving all the time, but we can apply compassion. And that connection will come, and then we'll see that truth. We can we can apply that healing balm of connect, c- compassion first in order to connect and feel truth, and then see love in all beings, and then we activate our original grand design. Um, next question: What path can we take when our family is not understanding our new way of thinking? This causes a feeling of separation. So forgiveness is a middle way construct, what they're saying. Forgiveness is there because that feels terrible. It requires a forgiveness. You lift that up to the construct of the soul and say, I forgive that feeling. I forgive that, how horrible that feels. Notice that the Arcturians didn't say, forgive yourself or forgive them. That can cause a return to shaming, blaming, separation constructs. So in the Arcturian way, we don't forgive people, we forgive circumstances because all beings are loving. Therefore, it's the circumstance and our perception, our reactions that need to be lifted up into the divine consciousness of this this loving consciousness that we are in the soul versus the people. People are innocent, but their thoughts cause pain. Their thoughts eventually go into separation in the emotion and then in the words and then in the actions, right? So we lift the circumstances, their actions, their behaviors up into the realms of the soul where everything was pure and true and holy to begin with in its original grand design. Um, to evidence this, the Arcturians are giving an example um, <clears throat> it's easy for us to sit here and say, this is what they're saying. It's easy for us to sit here and say when someone has hurt you that you could just separate and say, well, that doesn't feel good. And that means they don't love me. They don't care about me. My family doesn't understand me. They cannot understand you and still love you but what the mind does the ego goes well they don't love me if they love me they do this if they love me they wouldn't do that they wouldn't say this they wouldn't say that but remember the being itself at the soul level is innocent but the arcturians never said that thought streams are innocent or that words are innocent but they also didn't say judge them for for those thought streams either Thought streams and emotions are not you. Thoughts didn't come from you. You don't create them. They come. And then you choose them. They come because of thousands of years of separation soul construct. They come because we are co-creating in a massive 9 billion member system dreaming. And we share the same dream. That's why sometimes you can love someone and you see, you, you want to really understand and see the mind of a murderer. They love people that they murder. How can that be? Because they're picking up on something that's not theirs. You can call that something evil if you want, but that just perpetuates the, the, the cycle. <laughs> the murderer himself is not evil. Right? Just like the family member themselves who are shaming you, they're not evil. They want to love you. (laughs) It's in their original design to love you, but the separation design says, that person's a threat to me. That person says this. That person feels that. The separation design creates thoughts and emotions that aren't theirs because we're collectively dreaming about shame, unworthiness, resentment, bitterness, hatred. We create these dreams of they say this, this means that all the time. Right? 
it, it's just like parents will understand this no matter how many times your children when they're teenagers and they come forth and they're like you're this and you're that and i freaking hate you have your kids ever done that well my kids have one of them <laughs> and that's just the consciousness that's there coming in he has a soul that's not his soul right that's not who he is he in his soul he's innocent but he's co-dreaming with a group of people who want to hate their parents and who want to blame their parents and who want to do that so he takes it it's convenient and when he's shattered and broken and afraid he goes for it and the mind goes oh i'm threatened get them get them in the places where it hurts But that's not who he is. Parents have the most unconditional love. Parents are a phenomenal example, both animal parents and human parents. This is why I know you're innocent beings. Because no matter what your kids do, you still absolutely love them. And no matter what your parents do, you want to still love them. You'll still come back and, and there'll be a part of you that still thinks of the narcissist's mother as mommy and you still want to please her. And that's not just because of some Stockholm syndrome that you repeat either. Um, <clears throat> although it can go there. If you let it, you still want to purely love your parents. You still want to, to purely love people that you fall in love with as well in romantic relationships. You try hard. When you fall out of love, this is why you try so hard to return to it. Because you know that people are not their thoughts. They're not their behaviors. They're not their actions. They're not their words. They're not those things. And this is why the Arcturians still have immense hope in you and in us and all of us. They have immense hope in us. Immense faith in the truth, which is that we are doing this and we are fully capable of this great remembering. We show it every day. It's unfortunate that it takes big tragedies for us to show it. <laughs> and we're still experiencing so many tragedies because we've created them as well to return us back to the original grand human design of truth, connection, and compassion. Earth is working with us to create some of these tragedies to return us back to our original grand human design of truth, connection, and compassion. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm doing this to get this downloaded into your mind so that your mind begins to recognize this as the true construct versus being so afraid of the tragedies that befall you that you also created. They befall you. They're painful. No one's taking that away. Of course, they're painful. And we created them. We created all the natural disasters. We created the terrorism. We created r rape, war, genocide. Now, now, these are level teachings. And if you hear me with your soul, you're going to know the truth of it. And you're also going to say, and that sucks. It still hurts. No one's taking that away or saying you should accept it just because it's true that we created it. It's nothing more gaslighting in spiritual teachings when people take this truth and they don't use it properly. You see that a lot these days when people take the truth of, well, they're just you. So look at yourself. If someone rapes you, you better look at yourself. No one wants to hear that. Because that's not true. They are and they aren't simultaneously. And when they're pretending that they're not and they do something atrocious, it's still atrocious. And suffering is still very real. We're not going to Byron Katie this for you and tell you to do what she did and walk up to an individual who has a gun pointed at her head and say, I love you. Because if you're in that consciousness, you're not going to get shot. But chances are you're not in that consciousness. Chances are that the, the mind is going to shake. Your hands are going to shake. You're going to go into some anxiety. <clears throat> right? Chances are. It's going to be hard for you to look at that person with a gun pointed to the head and still love them and say, yeah, do what you need to do. And for that not to be some deep separation in your mind and because you actually want to die, which is different. But you actually know that they're not going to in your deepest core. Only an enlightened person could know that. 
and invigorate that consciousness and stay in that consciousness in all moments. These are things that Byron Katie does, Ram Das does, right? It's a process. And sometimes you just have to sit with that feeling of separation until it begins to feel different. And that is going to take practice and time and forgiveness and compassion. Again, you have to stop bypassing and running from the feeling, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and this is exactly it. This is what the mind does. This is what the mind does. The, the Arcturians are saying this is a perfect example of what the mind does to get you to sway from this truth. The mind will say, can't we have preferences and choose who and what we want to listen to, experience, and what we eat? Sure you can. Sure you can. Absolutely you can. And you do. Um, I think I'm finally beginning to understand your aversion to it doesn't resonate. But I'm still a little confused. Confusion is what the ego says. It says, I'm confused. Let me separate that because I only have one truth, which is probably a separation-based truth. But this is how I've identified love. And if it doesn't fit into my mold, I'm confused. The first thing you do is obliterate the word confused from your vocabulary. Do not use it again. This is a bridge of consciousness. We avoid certain things in order to return to wholeness. So we do this here as well. We avoid the word confusion because confusion is the author of fear. It carries thousands of years of energy, separation energy in its etymology. So this isn't, oh, the word is bad. or Oh, the word is evil. When we separate to return to wholeness, we say, huh, that has in its etymology, that language, thousands of years of fear-based energy and frequency. So if you didn't use that word and you asked them the same question, but you didn't seem confused, you might state it differently. Do you see where we're coming from? Let me read the rest of this. She said, it seems I should be able to choose. Okay, so you are always able to choose. Let me tell you this. You are able to choose suffering and death and illness and separation to feel a deep core of unhappiness that you um, that's slowly eating you away inside and you don't know what it is and say you're confused about it, you're able fully to do that. You got a, a, a hall pass for that shit. <laughs> they said, just give her the hall pass. That's what free will is. It's like the hall pass to continue to be in suffering and then say you're confused about it. So, so the ego will say, are you saying that we have to accept everything and have no judgment? No. What you do is you use a different word than judgment. So in the truth of these teachings, instead of using the word judgment, you'd use the word discernment because judgment, again, has thousands of years. I, I bring it for your awareness. I separate in order to connect you to a truth. But it has thousands of years of painful etymology in its energy field. So when you use discernment, Discernment comes from the original spiritual text. It is a grace. Change your wording in order to train your mind. Undo your mind from these words. Because we work backwards, we separate in order to connect. You can still do that if that's where you are. And sometimes the ego won't let you do anything but that. It just won't. It just won't let you do. It'll just stop you. So then you go backwards and you say, okay, the soul isn't going to take over. So I'm going to work with the mind. Um, and I'm going to tell it to use a different word. We're going to use the word discernment, which has thousands of years of beautiful wholeness based etymology. And it's powerful to be sick, telling your soul, oh my goodness, I have the power of discernment. Does that not feel good? So we just change it. We want to feel good for the ego. So give it a word. It's a little backwards, but that's what's working right now. People are going backwards to go forward and they're going out in order to go back in. So let's do it. Use a different word. Instead of confusion, what word would you use? You would say, I'm observing. I need more information. When you say this, I think I'm not able to choose. Can you tell me what that means? Do you see how I just totally changed the energy? And your whole question, 
right? So when we assume, we create all sorts of that original judgment, which is back to the etymology of original sin. Those two things came together thousands of years ago in our consciousness and teachings. Right? So you have to discern everything. Not that you have to accept, but you have to be able to accept that there is love in everything. That is something that is a must in these teachings. And the ego doesn't like the word must. It says, but that takes away my free will and my preferences and my creativity. Okay, great. Keep suffering. You have that right. You have the power. You are a powerful being. And choosing love and suffering is not that an easy choice by any means. I can sit here and talk about it all day. But it's not an easy choice, no matter what, when it comes down to it, because the ego doesn't make it easy. It doesn't. When it's in the driver's seat, it's not going to make it easy because it thinks it's going to die. So it's going to hang on to all these words. So acceptance is a grace, but it's original word. Let's look at the etymology. You're using a word that the soul doesn't actually want to use. And that's for a reason for you. So when you put the soul in charge of your mind, what word would you create instead of acceptance? Ask yourself that. Right? Maybe I'm going to go for it. Presence was one of the original words. Sacred witness. An older phrase, even older than presence. Change your words, change your life. Your whole life, you can become enlightened just by invigorating the sacred, sacred, ancient consciousness. Thousands of years of sacred energy and etymology. Change the words if you don't like the, the, the feeling. If it makes you feel that you don't have your preferences, change the word preference. Of course you can have your power. What you really want to say is, can't we have our power? And of course you can. What you really want to say is discern instead of choose. Of course you can discern who and what you want to listen to, but your job is to find wholeness. Sometimes when people are directly in their ego all the time, you just turn it off because you have to separate in order to connect again to yourself. And that's okay. That's the bridge of consciousness, which is right where we are. No one is perfect. So there's no Jesus walking the earth right now that says they can or should listen to anyone. And if Jesus was walking the earth right now, someone would get offended and kill him again. Because the ego is that resistant to oneness and connection. But Jesus would have a whole different life. He'd have to pay mortgages and do all that. Or if he didn't, it would only be because he had some case-based system where people came in and gave donations all the time, and then that wouldn't be realistic, right? This is why he doesn't come back, because it's just such a different world. <laughs> and there would be no point in it. We're not here for the guru consciousness anymore. It doesn't help us anymore. <clears throat> I'm glad you asked the question because it was a really good example of how the mind just comes about and very innocently the mind says, but now that doesn't feel good. So then we get to change the energy and, and take upon, um, take my class, the power of holy language. This will change your life. Right. Um, it will really change your life. Uh, do we have sickness because we have forgotten that we are a soul first? So the, our teachings are saying the nature of that question produces a separation. And it also makes us think that that sickness is, is something that, that, that we are powerless to, that there is a reason for it. Um, it's just as simple as this. When you change your DNA from wholeness and oneness and love and compassion and truth to separation there is an effect there's a natural consequence it's a natural consequence right sickness is a natural consequence it doesn't mean you've done something wrong we're empowered beings we made the choice but the thought construct itself 
creates illness in everyone. There's no way to avoid it um, without being either enlightened or dead right now. Now, according to humans from the future, um, when I do my remote viewing work with them, they're telling us that we're changing that right now. You either have to be enlightened or dead to not have that. And I don't mean like a little bit enlightened or having samadhi experiences. I mean, 100,000% enlightened and remember your whole consciousness. But even enlightened people are still affected by this. Even enlightened people, you know, you'll see the Dalai Lama get angry or have an effect of this consciousness because we're dreaming together and he's still pretending to be a body in this consciousness. So he's going to have the same effect. And why? Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have compassion. And compassion is embedded in his divine memory upon that enlightenment. He remembers it. So he's compassionate enough to stay in the construct and thereby be affected by the construct, which is why gurus die of cancer and enlightened people die of all sorts of things all the time. But there's this separation-based teaching that <clears throat> if you're ill, it means your consciousness isn't pure. And then that invigorates that separation consciousness right in a spiritual teaching. And we're doing the same thing all over again. Do you see how tricky this is? If we say our thoughts are not us, are we separated again? Yeah. Yeah, we are. But the thought construct are a part of an overall. It's not that it's not us. It's that we separate in order to remember wholeness. If I just tell you what the Arcturians say, which is that the cost thought construct is something created by everyone, you say, oh, that means I'm an empathic and I'm picking up on everyone else <clears throat> and their pain. And I don't want that. I don't want to be affected by a, a, a 9 billion member consciousness. And that feels disempowering to the ego because it wants to be separate. It wants to be in control and it wants to be just one consciousness. Do you see that paradox in all of this? Ego has deeply misconstrued oneness. It means it's only one. That's what it thinks it means. Right? So you separate in order to return. And that's where we are right now is understanding. We just say thoughts are a part of a shared stream. And in the higher level teachings, all right, in oneness teachings from Arcturians, they teach us that thoughts aren't actually true. They aren't actually real. Kind of just like how bodies aren't. Bodies are just a tool, it's a construct, but it's not in divine reality. The soul's real. The soul is the one experiencing. That is in your divine reality. So in the higher level teaching of this, <laughs> you see, it's so hard to teach this because even when I say higher, it's like, that's a construct, that's a hierarchy. But there's only one way to teach this because the language is still full of separation in most humans. If I start Speaking to you only in oneness, you won't understand me. So I have to teach you in separation in order for us to all return to oneness. That is the bridge of consciousness where we currently are. Believe me, I've tried to speak to you only in oneness teachings and you don't understand a word I'm saying. <clears throat> I let all the beings come through. We've channeled the Arcturians as well as the Adonai. We've channeled Elohim consciousness. We've channeled so much oneness. And when we do that, and I tell you the truth about thoughts that they don't exist. You go, oh, but they're there to me. They exist and don't at the same time as Schrodinger's thought. <laughs> Put it in a little box, right? This is the paradox that's going to blow your mind open. Your thoughts are not true. They're not real. They don't exist. But in the dream, they do. And in the dream, you're sharing it with billions of other beings and it's separate and one thought at the same time which is why so many thoughts about certain political systems make people upset and why so many thoughts about you know people can see like real good things and go oh my gosh i'm touched by that together at the same time because we are each other right the thoughts aren't real they feel real and the thing about it is, if I tell you that they're not real, the, the ego becomes immediately disempowered. <laughs> because the ego is going to say, well, that, does, that means I'm not real. And then you have to look at the bigger truth, which is bodies aren't real either. Ego has associated mind and body with its survival. And it gets mad. And it goes, I don't even, that doesn't even come in. That doesn't even come in. 
right? <clears throat> and if I teach you all of the ancient, sacred, high vibrational words and whatnot, you won't understand them, which is why I've been channeling them through a little bit at a time. For the past 10 years, I've been channeling these oneness constructs through a little bit at a time because the ego's got its defenses up very high. It thinks if it learns this, that it's going to die. Tricky, tricky, tricky. <clears throat> yeah. Um, do the Arcturians say we still must go inward to connect with spirit in addition to connect with all? Um, there's not really that you're going inward because when the moment you say inward, you think, well, what's out here? Everything that's out here is also in here. So because we're in this and consciousness, it's a bit sort of like we have to see what's out here in order to get back in here right now. We look at what's out here. And we make it congruent with what's in here. We take responsibility for it. We become, what does responsible mean? Anybody? You become aware of your ability to respond as God. And how does God respond? In truth, in compassion, in connection. That is the only thing we mean by that. So you look upon your world with great compassion, with great connection, with great respect, with great seeing the truths, but seeing them in compassion, seeing the truth, but connecting, not pushing away. This is how we become deeply invigorated into our original grand design. So it's not necessarily that we're going to be sitting here thinking what's inward, what outward. When I tell you to go within, people just start thinking about what does that mean? Because that's not really the truth. The soul isn't in here. And the mind thinks it's a body. So it goes, well, is it in the heart? Do I focus on the heart? Is it in my mind somewhere? Is it in the pineal gland? We have teachings about that, <laughs> right? <clears throat> this is what the head does. Give me a map of it. Where is it in my body? Where is it within? <laughs> we go there. Even when we're unwilling to admit it, that's what the mind does. What is within? Where is within? Draw me a map for it. <laughs> right that's because the soul actually isn't in there it's here body is what there's nothing in this body it's not in your heart it's not in your brain your body is what's kind of shut in it's the soul that's more freeing so you get to look and feel everything out here without seeing it as separate anymore that is your practice. Everything is your soul and everyone is your soul and there are no exceptions. Now the ego is going to go, but what about boundaries? But what about narcissists? But what about murderers? But what about safety? Okay, that's some obvious stuff, <laughs> right? <clears throat> when you're walking around and you're all enlightened beings and you'll be able to handle the, the rapists and the murderers and the narcissists and until then you can continue, it's okay. Doesn't mean anything's wrong when you need to, those boundaries, right? Doesn't mean they don't exist or they're not relevant or they're not helpful. Right? These teachings don't obliterate some of your safety mechanisms or make them less reliable or less resonant. Because your way is a work through, your way is a working towards these teachings. But we're just not there yet in, our, <clears throat> in the entirety of our consciousness on this planet which is the only reason why you're resistant to them, to the teachings. <laughs> See, this is another way that we do it. You're, you guys are giving me some great examples. And since I'm still tired, I can probably still teach this to you through them. Um, this is another thing we do. We say, well, if this teachings is true, it obliterates all the other teachings. And the other thing that the other collective said means that's not true. So let's bring this into oneness for you. Everything you see is not true on this planet. Everything you see right now is ultimately insane. Because the soul doesn't have eyes. It can't turn it around onto itself. 
the body has eyes. So everything that you see, you can only respond or react to, and it is an illusion. So of course, they're telling you there is no 1% of population in control in the higher realms. That's illusion. But it's also true, Arcturians are an and consciousness, that we are pretending and that pretending of that 1% in the population has become painful, is full of suffering, and is very real in our experiencing. So both of those things are true. Can you hold that in a loving consciousness? Probably not. But right now, you're using that 1% teaching because a huge collective of humans have made it true for them and have created it and are afraid of it. And there's more and more and more humans who are saying, I don't want it. So they resist it and they use it in consciousness to get away from it. And then there are less than 1% of humans who can say, I love that 1% and everything that they do and everything that they are and everything is perfect and true and holy. That's where you're going that you aren't there yet. Not just you, me, most of us aren't there yet. Right? Right? But when you're there yet and you can look down at the bird's eye view and go, oh my gosh, are you telling me that 1% of our population pretended they didn't have a soul, came in as backdrop people, controlled everything, and then we remembered our consciousness even more and it was an even more delicious consciousness loving experience because they did that crap? We can't see that from the ego perspective right now. It takes an Arcturian's perspective. So many people want the channelings of these 11th density beings. And then they give you that teaching and you go, but I still want to hate the 1%. What do I do now? <laughs> that doesn't feel good for you to tell me to love the 1% and everything they're doing. And then everything is going to awaken us further. But that's your truth. And that is the truth or it wouldn't be happening. You don't do things for no reason. You always do them for the sake of awakening and return to your original grand design. Can you wrap that around the ego? Probably not. It takes some time. These teachings don't come right away. <clears throat> uh, with that one, Indira, it, it takes, in order to undo the idea of attack, um, it takes some practice. Removing all the attack-based words would be a great place to start because you go backwards and eventually you remove the feelings attached to them and eventually you'll remove the thoughts that created them, right? So start with your vocabulary <clears throat> and let's go outward to get inward again <laughs> because that's, what the, that's the only way you have to trick the ego into really getting this. It's a trick for the ego. All right. Um, yeah, and this is another example of what we do. We're like, well, is there a blueprint? Is there a book? Is there a sound healing? Is there a <clears throat> people start asking for light codes and, and languages? And not that that's bad, but this is another example of us going outward in order to, to get something from the outward perspective. But believe me, when you give your soul full permission to direct your entire mind, body, soul construct. When you give your soul permission to direct your thoughts, what thoughts you have, when you give your soul permission to direct your feelings and how you react and respond, when you give your soul permission to direct your body to return to wholeness, then you're not going to need the Arcturian Council to write a book for you. Right? Because you're just as powerful. They are you. They are you. We've given angels and deities so much power, but according to the law of one, we are them and they are us pretending to be different. So why would we look to them when we can just look to our own soul construct? Go for it. Try it out. You don't believe me? Try it out. It's okay. It's okay to just not take what they're saying 
and just jump all over it. Take your time with it. But one day, the mind, body, soul construct that you have will be tired and you will want the soul, mind, emotion construct. It's typically when we get so tired or or tragedies befall us or deep sickness or deep dark night of the soul. These are the things we create that cause us to want the original soul construct again. And I hope that you don't wait until it gets there because it will get there. That's how we're designed. The original human design is grand. It'll take over at some point in time. It'll break through that new faulty design that we've created to separate. But typically it takes dark night of the soul or physical illness or tragedy or deep loss or something for us to remember this original design of oneness. So when you start these practices of giving your thought stream and giving your soul permission to be in charge of the thought stream, to control the, the mind and the emotional system and the body, it's just going to do it. And you don't need it. And then the mind wants to know how it's like, well, how does it do it? And how is that going to feel? And is that going to feel good? Should I be afraid? Is that going to feel bad? And do I need to meditate for three hours? Give me a blueprint. And the soul's just like, shut up and let me do my job. <laughs> You're right. Uh, ascension is what we're designed to do. Ascension is more, it's not a going upward as the word dictates. It's a return to what you already are. That's what they've always said about ascension. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, you got to change that word. You use the word accept again, but that's not really what your ego wants to do because when the ego is told to accept, it automatically says, I'm wrong and I have to accept that, or I'm out of power and I have to accept that I'm something's off and I have no control. I have no power. That is the etymology of that word energetically is powerless. We don't even want to use that word. Right? So the the true word is awareness. How do I become loving and aware of the truths of what we have created? Let's start with just observing the truths of what we have created. But the thing about it is, what did we create? What did we create? Truth cannot be created nor destroyed is what they're saying. So you're trying to love and accept something that's not real. If nothing that you see is real, including perceptions, including your reactions, including what we've labeled truths, everything here is insane. So what is it that you're trying to accept? Truth is not a word that we typically use because truth isn't on this planet in an action or a reaction or a scenario. And the mind likes to gauge truth as being something that we can grasp in an action, reaction, or circumstance, or a scenario. And typically when we do that, we're back to this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong, this is the likeness, this is the evil darkness and the dark ones and the 1%. We just go there. Do you see how tricky this is? So don't use the word truth because it's a word that isn't on this planet that you're not ready for. That would be the last word I would use right now. So it isn't the truth that you've created. Realize that you create an illusion that is full of suffering and forgive that. Don't use the word accept. Use the word forgive and don't use the word truth. Use the word illusion. Now, you're going to take this as a don't and do when I start teaching to you because those are the words I just used. And those are your guide prints. Those are your guidelines. Nothing is created in truth here because truth cannot be created nor destroyed. Do you remember that? That is cosmic law. So everything that's created typically is not true. (laughs) And what I mean by that is not that there isn't a good energy about it. The mind goes, but that means it's not, if it's not true, then that means it's bad. And that means it means nothing. It just means that everything by premise is a dream. That's all it means. Everything that you see is a dream, and dreams aren't true. 
ego is going to accept is going to accept or deny this or tug on you and pull upon you with these teachings but you're not meant to accept um child trafficking and rape and harm and um Jesus even came through and always told us that the soul is real and true and love that we are love we are innocent but he never said thoughts are true or innocent is thoughts that then create those actions and they are not innocent they require forgiveness not acceptance they require compassion presence rehabilitation there's many things that that requires and it's going to require every, everybody being on board for that degree of rehabilitation but never acceptance we don't accept someone causing another being suffering that's not where they're going here do you see what we mean? Right. And this is the paradox of the world is that we have to take action towards rehabilitating. Do you see how I changed the words? I didn't say take action against. This is what we unawakened people often do in the vocabulary. But you take action to rehabilitate the human soul, to give them the love that they need. Because that is what is required on this planet for child abuse tra and trafficking and all that to stop. It requires the rehabilitation of the mind, right? Humans from the future have taught us a lot about that in our remote viewing and channeling sessions with them. Yeah, they're on to it 100 years in the future. To the extent that prison systems are completely rehabilitated. It's completely different 100 years in the future than it is now in New Earth. Right? So this is a lot to teach about. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to close up. We've given you a lot and we don't want to make the brain just go... Poof. 